problems with service principal names, um, managed service accounts, and IIS. Um, this doesn't really seem to have anything to do with um, ZPA, but seems to manifest itself with ZPA, which might be something to do with the DNS or the way we uh, resolve and intercept. Um, so I've got a packy capture here. I've got my um, IIS server here. I've got a couple of directories here that will do. So it'll do Kerberos, it'll do Kerberos followed by NTLM, NTLM authentication, NTLM followed by Kerberos. Um, I've got an application pool and it's running as this uh, managed service account. Um, if we jump on the domain controller, um, you can see that uh, we've got a service principal name for iis.welshgeek.net um, against the managed service account um, and a host there as well. Um, if we look at the uh, managed service account here, um, we can show um, those um, service principal names are there. Um, and we can see uh, when did it last log on here, because um, I've done an IIS reset um, a couple of minutes ago. Um, and then in my... Uh, IIS, where have I put that? IIS users. Um, I've lost my group. I, hmm. No, it's not that one. SQL IIS. Group name to retrieve them. Uh, oh, it's under a PowerShell. That's why it's here. Um, it's called IIS Group Managed Service Account members is the domain controller. That's the one that's allowed to retrieve the uh, managed service account and the password. Um, <clears throat> so it's all set up um, as you'd expect. Um, so if I run a, let's run a K list, okay, in it, log on as me. So I've got my Kerberos ticket. Um, and then what I'm going to do is curl to the IIS server slash Kerberos, negotiate authentication, um, that'll run and we'll get an error. And if I look in my Wireshark, it says AP error modified. Um, and if you actually look here, it'll say back in the error that the server name it thinks is DC2, which is the physical name of the server, not the IIS server that I accessed. And if I run the same command, but I go to uh, DC2, it actually works. They're, they're, one is the, the, the physical name, one is the um, virtual name, um, it all works. Um, so let's, uh, let's clear this, we'll do a K-list purge. Um, uh, K, uh, K, K destroy minus A, K-list. Okay, uh, and what we'll do is we'll jump across to the um, the server itself um, and what we're going to do is we're going to go to the default website manage authentication uh, change the uh, you do it at the, the root of the website we're going to disable kernel, kernel mode authentication because we're not doing it at the web server level and we've got virtual servers um, if we disable this now and we look at the Kerberos application it, it filters down so you have to do it at the root for it to apply on the virtual directory. Um, if you're doing it across the entire server, you don't need to worry about that. Um, so it's uh, kernel mode now is disabled at my um, at my uh, folder level here. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clear out um, all the kind of cache tickets and everything here, um, the cache within IIS. Um, so these were the, the, that was the error one, this was the OK for DC2. Um, 
So now, uh, if I do a K in it, got my Kerberos tickets here, and I go to IIS. Uh, oh, web server. Um, sorry, because I changed the settings, I need to do an IIS reset. Uh, let's reset the IIS server. And you'll notice I did actually get a Kerberos ticket here, so let's um, destroy uh, I want to make sure we're doing this uh, from first principles. IIS is reset. We'll clear that um, cache again. Um, let's run that same command. And the web server comes back correctly. Um, and equally, if we go to DC2, um, and before I press enter on this, I'll just um, jump over to my Wireshark trace. So um, here was me getting my ticket granting ticket. Um, I issued the, the request. So um, I issue a request for, uh, sorry, um, I issue, this is the ticket granting ticket error request with the auth. Uh, response to get the ticket granting ticket. Here is now a request for a service ticket um, for the service HTTP IIS.welshkey.net. Here is the uh, the ticket, and then I send a GET request with the ticket in it, and I get the, the, the content back OK. If I now go to DC2 and issue the same kind of request, we'll now get the error as you'd expect. Um, but uh, here is, uh, let's have a look. Here is the ticket granting ticket. Here is the request for DC2. I send the request and now I get the error modified. And this time it's because the server is saying, no, my service name is SQL IIS. And that's all because of the, um, uh, the principal name, the managed service account running on the application pool. Um, so what does this leave us? Um, what it means is if you are running managed service accounts for IIS or your web server, they need to be able to decrypt the Kerberos ticket presented to them by the user. So the user goes, gets a Kerberos ticket for the IIS server, sends it as part of the GET request. The managed service account for which the application is running as needs to be able to decode it. In IIS, unless it's all running as the default website, which will be the um, local system account, um, even though my application pool is running as the user account, the default website will not be able to decode them. You need to make sure that you've um, disabled kernel mode uh, authentication. And by default, IIS enables kernel mode authentication, which may improve performance and prevent authentication problems with application pools configured with a use, custom user identity. I haven't actually managed to find that uh, to be the case. I see that it actually manages to make problems worse. There may be a more fundamental problem or a simpler solution than what I've found. Um, but it certainly seems to be the problem with IIS and the account that the application pools are running as. Um, and why is this important? So um, what you'd actually see here, um, if we just run uh, this one, curve NTLM uh, minus V, um, you'll see that uh, the server is gonna respond, authenticate, negotiate, authenticate NTLM. Um, in this case. Now, your browser will try the, 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 um, the, the uh, more secure supported version, so it'll try the negotiate authentication rather than NTLM, for example. Um, and when that fails, it doesn't fall back to NTLM or SPNego. Um, so, you know, we, we can certainly do uh, minus NTLM here, uh, U, M, Ryan, at Welsh Geek. Um, we get errors with that one because even though oh no nope, hang on 
I'm going to have two minuses in there. So I forced it to do NTLM, and NTLM will succeed because I'm it's a challenge response, but because your browser will inherently try either negotiate or NTLM, whichever one it it can support and is the 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 more secure, um, then then potentially you'll have authentication problems. Now, in my specific example, what I'm trying to troubleshoot here is a problem with Outlook Web Access, or more specifically the Outlook client. So I can force the web client to go uh, back to NTLM when there is this uh, FQDN um, service principle name that extended protection check error. I can solve that by forcing the browser to do NTLM, which is not ideal. I really want it to be doing the native Kerberos authentication, but the Outlook client is not doing the, uh, N the um, Kerberos authentication. Um, and the reason the Outlook client is not doing the Kerberos authentication is because that um, the service principal name and the, the, the service isn't able to decode it. Um, so I hope this is useful. I mean, there's a couple of pointers here of uh, places to look and uh, uh, configuration. Unfortunately, it does seem to be a server side configuration rather than a client side configuration. Um, although client side, you could um, say, well, do NTLM rather than Kerberos. But in most cases, you're going to want Kerberos to work. I hope this is uh, useful. Mark at zscaler.com.